Hey everyone, I'm Chandra with Junk and Chic, and I decided to pop on here today and do a little video. I'm working on a little piece, and I'm gonna make some molds with you, and I'm also gonna apply some rice paper to my piece, and just thought maybe you'd wanna tag along and see how it's all done. So here we go. Get you closer where you can see what's going on. Okay. So what we use when we make our molds is we use a Lumilite. It's a two-part, um, and we get these nifty little, just plastic little measuring cups or medicine cups. Um, you can get them at your dollar store or Hobby Lobby, um, whatever's easiest for you. And we're going to be, today we're going to be pouring a new mold in the Lily Flowers mold by Redesign with Prima. As you can see uh, over there, I already have a bunch of these poured. Maybe we're going to pour them. Let me see if I can get this open. Goodness gracious. Okay. And like I said, it's a two-part series. Um, okay. So it <clears throat> there's no specific amount you have to use. Um, once you play around with it a little, you'll kind of know what you need depending on the mold size you're using. Um, the important part is just to make sure that it's um, two parts and they're equal parts. So you can still find the measuring on this. Okay. And we use this plastic bag. Um, we put this on top of the uh, part A or part B, I guess, whatever it is. We see part B just because the lid is so hard to get off. So it kind of just helps weenies like me be able to get it off. Okay, we pour equal part of the part A. Okay, so now we're just gonna take our little measuring cup and pour both parts in here. Then you just want to give it a quick stir and you just stir until it's clear. You know that both parts are together. And after this point, you don't have long. You gotta be have your stuff ready and work quick. Just go ahead and fill your mold. And you don't want to fill it all the way to the edges. Um, this will kind of level out. Um, it just kind of helps you keep from over pouring, which I'm kind of famous for. about right. And then I just go back, and if you have any areas that maybe the um, resin didn't quite get into, you can go ahead and just dab or open it up almost with whatever tool you have available. Ours is a fancy dancy um, spatula that we got from Dollar Store. And then if you have excess, which a good pour probably doesn't, but I am not a good pourer, so I get excess, and I just kind of scrape it off the top. That way, once this dries, it's just easier to clean up. <clears throat> okay, so that is poured and doing its thing. That'll take about 10 minutes to set up. We'll come back to that in just a second. Um, if you do kind of watch it, you'll notice that it's clear right now. Um, this resin that we're working with, it will turn white once it dries. This is the quick setting. And then I'm going to kind of show you what, oops, get that out of the way, what we've done. So here's one that I already poured. I poured this this morning. Um, and so now 
what I'm going to do, I guess I probably won't do this on camera, but what I normally would do is paint these up. You can apply them to your piece um, and then paint them, or you can paint them first. That's kind of whatever you're doing and what your preference is. Um, so while this bad boy is sitting up, let's take a piece of our rice paper. Um, and this is... This is one of the new rice papers from Redesign with Prima. It's Botanical Sonata. There you go. And it just comes in a sheet. Um, when you get the rice paper, it does have a couple of creases in it from where the where it's folded in the package. Um, before the video started, I just took, I just laid it down. I took a piece of parchment paper over it. And then I put an iron on about medium heat. And I just ironed it out and ironed the crease out of it. So... I would have it ready to go for you guys. So now let's go over to the piece while that's setting up. Maybe. Hold on, let me adjust you. Okay. So here is the piece that we're going to be working on. Let me turn this light up a little bit so you can see better. Okay, it's just a little small cabinet that need some love. <clears throat> so, just like that. I'm just going to take the rice paper. I actually already cut it. It does come in a full sheet. I cut a piece of it off and already have it on here so you guys can see it. Um, and now I'm going to add some more of it just to make some fun in it. Let me see what else we got to work with. Okay, so we got butterflies and we have a little bug guy we're going to use. Actually, I'll just leave that. So now, <clears throat> since it's rice paper, I, I don't know the proper way, if there is a proper way to do this, but from back in my scrapbooking days when I used to work with rice paper, we were taught to just dip our finger in a little bit of water. You can kind of just get the very edge wet, like so, and then that way you can just give it a pull, slight pull, and it'll give you that ripped edge effect. So I'm kind of new to the camera scene, so we're trying. Usually my partner in crime is here to help me. Um, like I said, I'm with Junk and Sheet Treasures, and we're actually a mother-daughter duo. And we um, have turned our love into a business, and we redo furniture. Um, and then we also sell uh, for the companies that we use daily. This piece um, that you see in front of me, it's actually painted with um, a new collection from Paint Couture. It's the CC Remix collection. And the color that I chose for this piece was the Grateful Dead. It's, I don't know if you can see it on camera very well, but it's a very fun color because my favorite color happens to be purple. And this is a gray with a purple undertone and it's just, just enough pizzazz, but yet it can kind of hang out in the neutral family somewhat. Okay, we're getting there. So you guys can kind of see what the effect is, what I'm doing here. Maybe, whoop, well, I guess I can just rip it like that too. Okay. That's the good thing, I guess, about using your own creative mind that you screw something up, you just keep rolling with it because nobody knows what you were trying to do except for you. <laughs> Almost, guys. Oops, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so now I've got my piece ready to rock and roll and it's all tattered up on the edges like I want it. And now I'm gonna just kind of figure out where it is. I wanna apply it. Can you see up there? No, let's adjust you guys just a little bit. Maybe. Sorry for that. Okay. So I think 
Maybe right up here looks pretty good for this little guy. So now I'm gonna take my satin top coat, which I don't know why I'm shaking it. I'm just nervous on camera, evidently. But I'm taking my satin top coat by Paint Couture. And then I'm going to stir it. And you give it a pretty good stir just to make sure it's all mixed up nice and pretty. Okay. Normally I'd probably stir it a little bit longer, but I did just use this. So we're going to speed up the process a little bit and bring it up stirred. Okay, I'm just getting my brush out. And... There's no rocket scientist science to this. It's just kind of wherever you want to put it. So over in here looks kind of good. I think we held it up. So I'm just gonna. Oops. I'm just gonna make a mess on camera. Is what I'm gonna do. Okay. And I'm not too worried about getting too much on because once it's all finished, I'll put a top coat over it anyhow. Okay. So brush back in a plastic baggie. Now what do I do with the other this? So I'm just going to kind of decide where I want it, which I think I'll do it about right in here. And I'm just going to stick it on there. <laughs> Make sure I got all the wrinkles out of it. And I want that tattered look, so I'm just gonna kind of push the ripped edges out into the clear coat so that it dries with that effect. Okay, now gonna hit it again and saturate the top saturate over the top with the clear coat and something that I love about the pink to top coat is that it actually goes on white um, almost filmy and when I very first tried that let me tell you I was pretty scared I thought I was ruining my piece but it turns out that that's the way it's supposed to be it dries clear and level and it's nice because then you can actually see where you've applied it for sure and where you haven't. Okay, so that puppy is where it's gonna spend its life. Let's see, let's get the little bee out. What are we gonna do with the little bee? We'll put him down here. Yeah, let's put him down bottom. So again, I'm just Wetting the edge of this. Okay. So I thought that worked a lot better just dampening all, the edge all the way around before I started. See, I'm learning with you guys. It's been a long time since I've touched rice paper. Didn't ever think it would come back for furniture, but I sure am glad it did. Okay. Okay. Get that little fuzzy off. Okay. Mr. B is ready. And I think he'll go somewhere in here. Kind of put him at an angle. Again, make sure you get all your wrinkles out. Okay, keep this 
on there. Let's kind of seal him up so he doesn't fly away. All right. And voila, we have applied our rice paper. Okay, now let's go back over to our mold. Let's see what the status of that mold is. Okay, here we go. Move this back over. Not quite ready yet. The chemicals actually, they get hot when they are setting up. Um, so that's one kind of way you just tap on it and feel once it's white and feel the heat once the heat's gone then we'll then we'll test a little bit um okay in the meantime this will be a paper piece and I'll show you what we're going to do with that let's get that out Grabbed a couple colors quick that I know I'm gonna want to incorporate in this. I got the Polynesian pink and sugar plum from Pink Tour. Oops. Here I thought I was all organized when I was in the video, but looks like I'm not. Now we are. Okay. So like I said, these molds, um, depending on what effect you're going for, you can apply the molds to your piece and then paint them, or you can paint them and then apply them. Um, I've always actually applied them and then painted them, but with this piece I wanted to, you know, try something different and figured what better way to try it out than on camera with you guys. Okay. Grab butterfly. Oh, and I also did pour um, molds not only from the lily flowers but a couple older molds that we have. And of course, I don't know the name of that one. Um, and then one, a really old one that we've had for a while now, Regal Findings. And that's where I got all my little bugs and there were little butterflies on there and some little crowns because I thought that would tie into the bug and crown that was on the paper. Okay, so it's literally just like when you were a kid. You just paint the piece however you see fit with what's in your mind for your creation. This creation, I am, I'm kind of a like color, I'm kind of a color girl. So with the entire piece being done in that grateful dead um really love the color or on there or the shade but i just feel like this piece definitely needs some kind of pop so out comes polynesian pink because if there's any color that reminds me of being a little girl it's definitely this it's your bubblegum bright true pink color So I'm just going to paint up the butterfly, see if it's a mess I can make. Sorry if I'm kind of a rambling fool, I, I'm trying to get used to this whole on camera thing, but it's still very new to me and very weird. I really feel like I'm talking to myself when it's actually okay right now. But I'm not. I'm talking to you guys. Okay. Mr. Butterfly is definitely pink. Actually, I'm going to put the sugar plum away for a minute. I'll just do one example. 
maybe. Okay, there's that. So before I came on the video, I actually had already painted the um, the piece and then I painted the hardware on it also. And I painted that in this pale gold, so because I thought that would go really nice with the paper background. So I'll so show off the metallic. The Paint Couture metallics are amazing. They're one of the best products on the market, in my opinion. And this is the pale gold. Um, they do come, they have lots of gold options. Uh, pale gold, rich gold, French gold. Um, and that's all I can remember right now, but I know there's another one. It's rose gold. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's when you mix it up, it it looks it looks like it's um not mixing, but it, it really is. Um again, this was a product the first time I used it. You just gotta keep with it a little bit and you'll see the gold shine through. Okay. <clears throat> and once my gold butterfly dries, I'm probably going to add some of this metallic for his body and his little antennas. Just start to see. One one awesome thing about this, um, the metallic by Pink Tour, is usually one layer or one um, coat does the trick because the pigment is so strong and there's actually metal flakes in this, unlike you know a lot of them on the market. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see my pretty pale gold piece. Okay. Okay, now let's check this mold again. Okay, so to test and see if the mold is ready, um, you just kind of peel back a little bit. Oh, in there, see if it pops. That means she's done. This is kind of the fun part. Kind of reminds me back of playing with Play-Doh as a kid. And it's, it's going to still be pretty soft at this point. Um, that's why it's just flopping over. It's still really easy to work with. Because this will eventually, as it, as it dries, it'll harden. So once it's completely dry, you will have a nice, hard, hard solid piece. Okay, get out of there, mister. <laughs> Okay, there's the first piece. I might have taken out just a little bit early. Might be rushing it for the video, but it's gonna be okay. Okay, and then once you get it out, um, I'm sure if you're a master pourer, it comes out just perfect. But for people like me, it comes out and it'll have where you over poured. Kind of like, let me see if you can see that. Look like this little area right here. So what I do, lay it on a flat surface, and then I got just all kinds of little tools, but I'm going to use my tweezers and just go around and grab it. Usually it'll come out, come off whole. Okay. All right, and voila. Now, if I was going to paint these on the piece, um, you can apply it at this state. Um, it's still it's still very bendable and it's easy to work with. So if you're going around a corner or an uneven surface, whatever, it's right now is the time to put her on there. Um, but for me, I'm going to have them flat. So I'm going to let them fully dry until 
I get this effect. And then once I am ready to apply it, uh, we actually just we use hot glue and we use the Gorilla hot glue sticks. Um, we've tried a lot of different brands and these by far work the best for us. So yeah, I think that's pretty much takes care of what I was going to show you guys today. Just how you do the molds and um, how pretty the metallics are. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe to my page and we will catch you on the flip side. Thanks.